I remember when I was a kid, and I used to look up to student athletes that were in college. I used to think to myself, if I can jump as high as they can jump, if I can dribble like they can dribble, have handles like they have, man, I will be something special. I will be able to go to college. I will be able to make my family proud. I will be able to, to, to get scholarships and whatnot and not have to pay for school. I used to think like that. And then I was fortunate enough to actually go to college and get my school and pay for it. And when I was in college, I, my mindset shifted a little bit because I made that list that everybody was talking about. I made the academic probation list. And then my mindset shifted. And I was like, man, if I didn't fail the sixth grade in the eighth grade, was in special education classes, and if I could actually read beyond an elementary school reading level right now, then I would be able to retain the information I have right now, and I'll be able to pass some of these tests. And some of you may not know academic probation means just that. You're on probation, and you keep messing up. You about to get up out of here. And I was on that list. But soon I found out how I study. I aligned myself with the right people, and I made it past that. So now I have the athletics and academics taken care of. But there was still something I was missing. It was beyond academics. It was beyond athletics. Whatever it was, I still couldn't put my finger on it. And those things were intangibles. But today I'm going to give you five intangibles that will change your life as far as being a student athlete. This doesn't matter if you're in high school or whether you're in college. <laughs> Loud you. Yes, indeed, Big Brother Bell here to give you all that you want and what you need. And before I get into the five intangibles you need in order to be your very best in college, let me go ahead and cordially invite you to hoopladdy.com to pick up a shirt or two. My shipment from last week is already out. I have some new designs that I want to get out to you. Be from my hands to yours. Everything that's made from these shirts that get to be recycled back into the Hoop Lottie. And I get to make some of these animation series that I haven't made in a while, like the one that I talk about. Um, how I got my first full ride scholarship. Some of you may not know this, but those animation series actually cost money to, to hire freelance and get all that taken care of. If you want to support this channel, other than subscribing and leaving comments, which are great, I appreciate both, stop by hooplotty.com and, and pick up a shirt. The first intangible that I want you to wrap your mind around is having ownership over your journey. Now, if you're new to this channel, you may not know that I talk about this quite a bit as far as being able to own your own journey as far as student athletes are concerned. You have so much imagery online, on TV, in the media, as far as how it's supposed to look. People talk, people look at you and say, "Well, well, if you're not doing, if you're not doing a lot of drinking, if you're not doing a lot of this, a lot of that, then you're not having the college experience. You're supposed to have the college experience." I want to go ahead and empower you to, to believe that you know your college experience is your college experience. You make it your own, and there's no set model for what that looks like for you. And you got to figure out what that is for you. If you start chasing what you see in the movies. If you start chasing off what your your uncle, uh, what, what your what your uncle said that it should look like, then you're gonna miss out of your own experience, and you may get yourself in some situations that you you may not even want to be in. That goes not only socially, but that goes to academically, that goes to financially, that goes to athletically. Owning your journey, it's like if you're going to a restaurant, you're going to this restaurant with some people that you know, like your coach, like your mom, like your dad. You show up to the restaurant there. Once you get there, you realize that. There's some other people that you know through a friend, people like your academic advisor, people like professors, people like the people that serve you food in the cafeteria, people like the librarian, people like just friends, people like whomever, like a lot of other people are there at the restaurant. You sit down at your table and then everyone's telling you what you should order. They're saying, oh man, you should try this. And they're telling you these things because either they tried it or they heard that it would be good. So because you, you are... You are young and impressionable. You want to make sure that you have good manners. So you allow these people to, to choose what's going on your plate. Even though you knew what you wanted to eat when you got there, you allowed them to pick what they you allowed them to pick what you were going to eat. You get around, you, you, you got everything taken care of, and you know, the food that you that, that you're eating, it's okay. It's it's not, it's it's it's, it's alright, but it's not what you wanted. And to add injury to insult, when it's all said and done. When everyone leaves, you're supposed to stay back, clean up everything, pay for all the orders, pay for all the orders that, that, that were made, and close down the shop. How would you feel about that? Basically, what I'm saying is when you go into college, everyone's going to have some type of rhyme or reason of why you should be listening to them. Whether And some of these people may be qualified. Some of these people are qualified. Some, people, some of these people aren't qualified. Some of these are academic advisors. They've been doing this for years. They know how to set up your, your, your graduation plan so you can get out in four years or five years or what have you. So they may be credible. Other people may not be credible because, you know, they just, they just 
from some people from around the way that care about you, but you know they they, they don't know. They they say, well, you, they'll tell you they give you these are the people to give you information like this. You want to be a teacher? Like, well, teachers don't make no money. You need to be a engineer. You need to be a so you want to you know they they mean well. So you you want to take some of their advice as well. But I made this example because. At the end of the day, whether they're credible or not, when it's all said and done, you're going to be the person that's having to do all the cleanup. You're going to be the person that has to pay for the meal. Your name is going to be on there. You're going to be the person that has to close down everything. When it's all said and done, when those loan officers want their money back, they're not going to call your academic advisor. They're not going to call your coach. They're not going to call your mom. They're not going to call your dad. They're not going to call you. No one. They're going to call you. You're on the hook. Your name is on the bill for all this stuff. And, and some of you may say, well, Bill, <clears throat> I'm a full ride scholarship player. That, that ain't no, ain't nothing coming to me. Listen, I don't care if you didn't have to pay a dime. The idea that you sat at an institution, sat at a university for four or five years, and even if it was paid for, but your time you can never get back, and you was majoring in some nonsense, some stuff that you didn't even want to major in, but you were trying to get along to get along. That's a loss, dude. That's a loss. So realizing that, yeah. This is a heck of an experience, and there are so many people that want to help you out, and that's good. I'm not trying to tell you not to listen to your academic advisor. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is it should make sense to you. You shouldn't be trying to do anybody else a favor majoring in certain, certain types of majors, or you shouldn't try to do anybody else a favor being a part of some social group that you don't want to be a part of or, or doing this active. This is your experience, and at the end of the day, it's going to be on you. It's going to be on you. These some of these social experience, some some of these social interactions that you don't, that you didn't want to be a part of, but your teammates were there, and you weren't owning your experience. You just said, "Well, my teammates are there, so I'm going to show up," and you end up getting arrested, or you end up getting on some type of probationary period with your team. That's not, that's not a good look. These four years or five years, they can either help you or haunt you after you leave college. Number two, the second intangible I would say is. Admit that you don't know what you're doing. That's fine. All of us started crawling before we start walking, right? All of us started like at ground zero. The issue is not if you don't know what you're doing. The issue is if you don't utilize the resources, if you don't raise your hand, if you don't go out and try to figure out how to get it taken care of. That's the issue. Being able to understand that, listen, I don't, I don't know everything about everything. That's fine. All of us are like that. If anybody, if someone doesn't tell you they, they start off like that, they're lying. They're lying. Understand that you're not always going to know everything as far as resources on campus, but you need to make sure you put yourself in contact with those individuals that do. Number three, another intangible that I want you to, to invest in is a feeling of belonging outside of your sport. Feeling a sense of belonging in academics and in your social life. Let me first start off by saying, that it's normal not to feel like you belong. It's normal because much like, much like social media, everybody's putting on a facade anyway. Everyone's trying to fake it while they make it. Everybody doesn't, everybody's trying to look cool and everybody's trying to make it seem like they have it all together. When you peel back that layer, you realize that everybody's going through different struggles they're not mentioning. You know, you go to college and you think that everybody's gonna, everything's gonna be cookie cutter when you get back out of college and you realize, but then you realize real soon that man, Things move around. I mean, some individuals, they have to go, they have parents that are going through cancer. They have parents that are getting divorced. They have houses that were taken back from them. So now they're living out of an apartment or they're living from in their grandma's house. Like they may lose a loved one. Like these things happen. So the last thing I want you to do is to feel like you don't fit in because socially, you don't feel like anybody else is going through what you're going through. I think about even my time, you know, um, I graduated much later than I had intended to graduate because one, one, I failed the sixth grade, but, but two, but two, I, I dropped out of school for two years anyway, because my mother passed away of cancer and I was taking care of my family in that, in that, in that gap time. So now look, I'm three years behind of where I was supposed to graduate. You don't think I, I struggled with if I fit in socially? I did. And then we can, we can take that same discomfort and apply it to academics. You may you may want to be a part of a major that is is tough. You can mess around and psych yourself out because you get in these classes and everybody else comes from a, a good background beforehand, like science classes beforehand. Like they may have great science teachers. They may have came from a math and science school in high school where you came from 
your high, your science high school teacher was horrible. They, they didn't teach you anything. So if you're not careful, you start getting in your own head saying, "Well, I don't belong here," and that's not that's not the case. That's not that's not the case at all. You have to sit back and look at it and say, "Well, I know there's someone that started from exactly where I'm starting, or exactly where I'm starting, or, or worse than what I'm starting, and still have made it to the goal." So then then it comes back to what I said earlier, as far as realizing that you don't know what you don't know right now and aligning yourself with those individuals that do reaching out to those resources that can actually help you you don't have to have gone to the, the state of the art high school in your state in order to be a physical therapist or in order to be a doctor or in order to be a, a veterinarian just because those professions are heavy in science you don't have to come from a huge background of that right you may have a different starting point you may have to apply yourself a little bit more you may have to figure out how you how you study you may have to reach out to some resources on campus those things may be apparent, but to say that you can't do it because you had a different starting line, that's crazy. That's not the case at all. Number four, much like sports, part of making it in college is going back to the fundamentals. Say if you're playing basketball and you're getting a shooting slump, the first thing they tell you to do is get a layup in. You have to see the ball going through the hoop for you to gain some confidence. Go back to your, your fundamentals. You don't have to be worried about doing the triple cross hezzy with the with the step back and try to you don't gotta work like slow it down go back to your fundamentals and then work your way to where you want to go it's the same thing as far as academics is concerned if you hit a slump go back to your fundamentals now what are your fundamentals as it relates to academics your fundamentals is making sure that you are up on your emails making sure that you're staying organized making sure that you follow up with your professor in person and then lastly making sure you get your assignments turned in on time these are the fundamental things that everything else is built upon when you do these things, then it makes it that much easier to make sure your tests are taken care of. Then it makes it that much easier to make sure exams and classes are passed. Like that's when it makes it easier when you go back to your fundamentals. And then everything else, those those, those phenomenal plays that you ooh and ah over, those those plays seem to just happen because you just went back to the fundamentals, which got you there in the first place. My fifth intangible is can be a little bit controversial, but listen. You have to start hanging around individuals that has either done what you want to do or they have gotten further along the journey than you have. You may hurt some feelings here, but I don't, I, don't, I don't believe in the whole idea that you should go with someone that's on the same level as you. You see people doing that all the time. Like they want to they lose some weight or they want to gain some weight or they want to get bigger in the weight room. And they go out there, they go out there and find somebody at the same level they're, they're at and they say, well, we're going we're gonna to get bigger together. We're going to lose this weight together. We're going to do this together. The problem with that is if both of you are here and this person slacks off and says, man, I'm about to go to sleep. I know I'm supposed to be here at 6 o'clock in the morning and work out, but today I ain't feeling it. If you just do a little bit more than what this person does, then you feel good about yourself. That's not a good barometer of success. That's not a good metric of success. I would rather you get involved with someone who has already built an appetite of the discipline it's going to take for you to get to where you're at to where you want to be so they're already along in that process or someone who's already done it they already got the body that you want they're already like it's better for you to team up with those individuals same thing as academically same thing ac athletically team up with those individuals that are either further along on that journey or they're, they're at the doggone promised land of where you want to be and you'll find yourself picking up habits you didn't even know you was going to pick up just by osmosis of being around them because there's a new level of standard that is so much higher than what you had used to put on yourself. So when I was in college, a good friend of mine uh, was real big on saving money, real big at saving money. Like we get in conversations to this day about saving money. And what I realized is even though I wasn't real big on saving money, as I hung around him, I found myself saving money on accident like oh i forgot i put that money there i forgot that i saved that i forgot i put that in that kind of account i forgot that i because i surrounded myself or, or started spending time with individuals that that modeled the behavior that i wanted now you got to be careful because this is why so many people get themselves in trouble when they do the exact opposite they want they want to start on a team they want they say man i want to make the varsity team or i want to make the college team but they hang around with nobody other than people that do the same thing. Sit back and talk and don't, don't, don't put any type of action to it. Or people that don't have any ambitions as far as uh, stretching themselves. So 
if you surround yourself by those individuals, you're going to start picking up habits that they're picking up unbeknownst to you. Not because they're bad people, but just because that's just how humans operate. You start picking up traits that they're picking up. I'm not saying you can't hang around them at all, but what I am saying, they, couldn't, they shouldn't be the majority of your time. They shouldn't be your bulk of your time. Out of 100%, you should be giving them less than 10, less than 5%. But the people that you, the people that are occupying those positions that you want to be, those are the people that should be getting the bulk of your attention so you can start picking up tricks of what does it take for me to be what I want to be as opposed to what I am right now. I hope all this made sense to you. Five intangibles. These are things that, you know, they don't talk to you about. Because a lot of you may think that, you know, it's just about your sport. It's like, it's about academics. But there is, there's some subtle nuances as far as being a student athlete that's beyond that. That if you want to make an impression, if you really want to make an impact in college, I need you to adopt these five things as early as possible. So as always, whether it's on the court or off, in the classroom or out, graduate at the top of your class. Hoop Loudy. Pick up a shirt. Buy, buy a few shirts. Now that we're on the topic. Man, y'all tell me about the designs of these shirts. Are you feeling these shirts? Stop by HoopLoudy.com. Check out the shirts. I got some orders coming out this upcoming week. Check out my shirts. They're at a reasonable price. Come on, from my hands to yours, I put these shirts, I, I make these shirts, I'm gonna send them right to you to your doorstep. <laughs>